Hey guys, this is Alex Pierce from LightSailVR.com. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about UE Blender, specifically the quick export option and how to bring it into Unreal. Make sure to watch our other videos on how to install UE Blender and how to get started. Make sure you're using the latest ueblender.exe file. The add-on is in the in menu. If you're in the 3D viewport and you press the in, it should bring up this menu on the side. I call this the in menu. You can also click this little arrow and drag it out to get it. There are a few different things here. By default, the export tab is open. We will talk a lot about this later on. There's also an import. There's also a key map here. This is basically an add-on all by itself. It's optional, but if you would like to have Unreal shortcuts right in Blender, you can use this panel. And then we also have references. This links to our documentation, our Discord, and our YouTube channels. But let's start by setting up Unreal. In Unreal, you can use Unreal 4 or 5. Go to Settings, Plugins, and let's type in USD and make sure to enable this. And then click Yes. Um, and we're not going to start quite yet. Uh, the other thing you want to do is go to Editor Preferences. So Edit, Editor Preferences, search for CPU. And then you want to make sure this is unchecked. Use less CPU and in background is unchecked. Okay, so let's go ahead and restart Unreal. Export full scene exports and overwrites the USD right next to your project file with the project name .usd as the file name. It also creates a folder called textures. Right now this folder is empty. The first time you export, it takes longer to export all your textures, but after that export times will be shorter. Import USD imports the USD file that matches your project name .usd. So for example, if I delete these objects and press import, it's going to import this USD file. It brings in the entire scene. Export scene selected objects exports one USD file with only the selected objects. Both full scene and scene selected objects overwrite this USD file. Now if we import this you'll see it's only the selected objects that get imported. Objects exports all selected objects to individual files with their name.usd as the file name. In all of our export functions the first thing that happens is it saves the scene then it exports the objects. The reason I have it set up that way is so that once you figure out your pipeline and what works for you, you can actually set your shortcut to be Control S. So anytime you save your project, it exports your full scene or it exports scene selected objects or it exports your objects. So you don't even have to think about a random shortcut or coming over here and then clicking on this and clicking again, right? So for instance, if I right click on this and do change shortcut, I can press a key and if I do Control S, it's going to change so that when I press Control S, it's going to ask me to export and overwrite the USD. And when I do this, again, it's going to save my project automatically. So that might be a really helpful feature. I've left this Confirm button up just so that you don't accidentally export and overwrite, but I can easily remove this pop-up if you want it to automatically save and export. If you save your blend file in your UE project, then when you export, it should automatically import into UE. So I'll show that right now. So here's my Unreal project. If I go into content and I made a new folder called my blend file and I saved this project as my project.blend and I've saved it, saved it in this folder. This folder is inside my Unreal project, right? Whenever I export, it's going to save my project, export it to my Unreal project folder and you can see here Unreal automatically detected it and it'll ask you if you want it to import or don't import and you can choose to say don't ask again if you know that every time you want to import it. I'll leave this unchecked for now. So it's going to ask us where to put it. I'll put it in the same folder. And we'll make sure that replace is checked. That's going to be important for the next time we do it. And we'll go ahead and import. And we didn't have anything in our scene, so <laughs> we'll try that again. I'm going to actually delete this and start over here. And now we have our My Project USD. If we go into here, we have our cube and this looks great, perfect, exactly what we were hoping it would look like. It's the right size. So now we have this cube and we want to change the color. We want to make it metallic. We want to make it reflective. We can go ahead and export full scene. Unreal has found it. We'll re-import, import. And now you can see it's updated our material. We could set our objects to be Control S instead or Control Alt S, or Control Shift F, whichever we want. Then basically all you have to do is you can select your objects, then you can export your objects. It'll automatically read them in Unreal. 
We can import them, put them in the same place. They came into the content my blend file. So we have Cone and our Suzanne. Now any changes I make in Blender, I can export these objects again. And we have our updated objects right here with our new materials and our new mesh changes and everything. Okay, this is another pipeline example that I think will be very useful for some people, is by going to Window, going down to Virtual Production, USD Stage, File, Open, and then opening that USD file. This is my preferred way of doing it with my particular pipeline, but depending on the pipeline, USD Stage may not work for you. Okay, so you can see USD Stage did a really good job of bringing in this file. You can see we have, it looks like we have most of our materials. Some of the, things, these are emissive. I can tell there's some that are missing here. You can see it brought in the camera. So you can see this one is very similar to the one we have in Blender. If we go over here to USD Stage Actor, you can see we have root and then we have area lights and we have cameras and the environment. So if we click on USD Stage Actor and then we click on root, you can see under the details panel, we have all of our static meshes and our materials and everything is here. And this is how you typically work with USD stages. So if we click on any of these, I can double click on this wheel robot, for instance, and I can, I can get him. If we come down to our materials, this is the really interesting thing about using USD in your pipeline. It didn't bring it in as individual quote unquote master materials. It automatically created this material instance for us. So all of these have a material instance. It's set up really nicely. You can, you can easily change a lot of the information here and you can really tweak it and do some really cool things. And also it's a lot more efficient to work with material instances. If you don't know about material instances, it's definitely worth doing some research on it. Okay, now back in Blender, we can move some things around, for instance, and we can scale some things. Let's just do, do it a little bit crazy so we can see what's going on here. Let's see, let's move these guys this way. And then I'm going to press Control Shift Alt E, which does the same thing as Quick Export. And if I come back to this USD file, you can see it is updating right now. Okay, there it's, it's now updated. Back in Unreal, if we go to Windows, Virtual Production, USD Stage, File, Reload, and it reloads that same file. And you can see it moved everything that we moved. It scaled the things that we scaled. And now this is a one-to-one -one representation of what's in Blender is also an Unreal in terms of where it's at. Let's say we wanted to change the texture of something. So let's say we just get rid of the base color altogether and we wanted to make this blue. File, reload. And just in case you're wondering, um, even if I do end up cutting the video to, to shorten this time, from the time I press export to the time the USD stage finishes refreshing, it's about maybe 20 seconds. So it's very, very quick. So you can see it automatically updated our texture. So I think you can get an understanding of like how powerful this can be. You can drag individual objects into your Unreal scene. And you can import them one by one. You can edit your meshes in Blender. And re-import them in the same folder. And it will automatically update them here. This works with materials as well. You can see it's brought in the image texture, it's brought in our metallic and roughness values, and it's brought in our color values. If you don't want to use the USD stage option, one option is to use the objects export function, which exports every single object into its own USD. One downside is the file sizes are much bigger. 
so keep that in mind. You'll need to import one by one. This method can take a long time to import, but depending on your pipeline, might be the best for you. So you can see here we have folders with all of our objects in them. We can filter by static mesh. And now we have our objects as individual objects that we can use however we want. If you're going to do your layout entirely in Unreal Engine, this might be the best way for you. One of the benefits of this workflow is if you have to change an object, let's say this store wall, make sure replace is set. Most geometry nodes functions do work, but you may have to put a realize instances node at the end of your geometry, and you may have to apply it to make it show up in Unreal Engine. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. Make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you in the next video.